in late 2022, the world changed. Chat GPT. Chat GPT. Chat GPT. AI revolution has begun. Now's the golden era to use this tech. Similar to how schools evolved to the calculator, they're going to evolve to chat. Students and teachers can no longer access an artificial intelligence chat bot. And it's only going to keep getting stronger. All right, so I'm going to get right into this. Here's absolutely everything you need to know on how not to miss out on the AI revolution. That will save you time and pain in every aspect of your high school life. All of this while being ethical. Plus, I'm going to show you Elon Musk's most valuable skill and how you can apply it to completely dominate. That's unreal. As always, there will be Easter eggs throughout this video, similar to this text right here. You can get this code, insert it into the link down below, and you'll get a bunch of resources, infographics, and whatnot to accompany and help you take action on this information. Let's begin by removing one of the lies that we seem to be taught in high school. High school and university admissions is a competition. You're competing against other people. If you want to get into Cornell, you're competing against 10 other people. Yale, 16 people. And for Harvard, you need to beat 25 people in order for you to get your spot. As a current UPenn Warden engineering student, I always considered the entire university admissions competition as a game. Either you beat other students and get the top marks and get accepted to your dream university, or you lose. Now with AI, you have that possibility to win or maintain equal or get absolutely destroyed. The reason why is because everyone is now upgrading away from bone arrows and onto snipers. And this first starts by getting into that competitive mindset and understanding that if you are not willing to do the work necessary to get into that one spot, someone else will come and take it from you. Okay, so I'm going to start off by giving you one of the most important information. Being a student myself in high school and having gone through this entire process and having tutored students for now over the past five to six years, one of the biggest things that students tell me all the time is that they need more time. I strongly believe that any students with the right priority and focus have all the time they need to succeed. Why? Because we all have and are all given the same 24 hours every single day. This is because time is the great equalizer. Elon Musk has the same amount of time as you and me. However, with that being said, there is a way to make the most out of your time. Now, one of the biggest points that I see that students can get the most time back is by eliminating pointless, fluffy assignments. Most of the time, these tend to be written assignments, such as reflections or pointless essays that truly don't matter to your final grade or learning in any capacity. And the thing is that unfortunately in the current education system, there are tons of pointless assignments that were given that just don't help us learn. Most of these are borderline a waste of time and don't actually contribute to you getting your final grade. Even then I'm gonna be in the education industry for probably my entire life. I'm gonna do everything I possibly can to make sure that these inefficiencies are removed. All right, so stay tuned. Since I'm gonna be giving you the cold hard truth, you need to understand that there are people who are literally copy and pasting the prompt into ChatGP, getting their essay, the reflection, whatever the case may be, and then just submitting that. that. Right there is your competition. And as much as you say it's unfair, unethical, whatever the case may be, you need to understand that that's who you're competing against. That is your competition and there are people who are doing that. Now, since we're looking to stay competitive while also staying ethical and following your school's rules of academic integrity and everything else, this is what I suggest instead to compete with this. I will use ChatGDP to give you the base of the essay, ideas, and reflection, in many ways the chunks of ideas and paragraphs that you need, and then you go in, you stitch it together, you add your own ideas in the middle, make it flow, make it feel like it's in your style, and then you can ask and chat again to give you suggestions on that, improve it once or twice, and then submit. This is similar to how you would use Google to search, just a lot more efficient. You can then ask the AI to slightly edit the points and everything into the style of a grade 11 student before you go in and add your own edits. Something I suggest is to tell it to tell you things that are uncommon, rare, or special that you can incorporate into your essay. For instance, you can write, what is an uncommon English reflection? You can then tell it to give you some novel suggestions, such as, tell me an interesting fact about the French Revolution that most people don't know. Here, the possibilities are really endless. What matters is differentiating yourself quickly, efficiently, and then getting those ideas onto paper and submitting it right away. With that being said though, you need to be careful that this type of assignment does 
not somehow built upon or is not on some exam later down the road because that could cause trouble because if you enter that exam that's actually graded and you haven't done that prep work in the beginning you're going to be at a disadvantage to the people who actually prepared but for the fluff assignments i strongly suggest using chat to speed run those give you those ideas and then execute right away in the same way that research papers leverage google to help search up information and facts instead of going to the library you can use ChatGPT to do the same one final tip i say is about reading comprehension many times you're given fluff assignments which is just a huge wall of text that you need to read from my experience i found that just reading that wall of text for 30 minutes is a horrible waste of my time because by the end of that i don't really have a good idea of what happened i key points are kind of mixed up i need to read it again i don't fully understand it as well as i could have if i practiced active recall what's great now is that with chat you can actually practice that active recall so get that text copy and paste it put it to chat ask it to summarize the key points, ask it to ask it, ask you questions about those key points, and then you can speed up that process so much faster. And here's another important point to note that the process of active recall, meaning you go through it, you ask questions, you actually try to investigate and understand what's going on rather than just reading text is much more mentally straining on your brain. Why? Because you're actually learning. And when that's the case, you know, you're in good because that is where progress is made when it came to learning. And again, if you have an annoying PDF, use a PDF to text converter. That'll save you a lot of time. All right, now let's talk about saving time with writing. The AI can help build the foundation of really any piece of writing. However, it can't replace your most important function, which is vetting, simplifying, and adding your own ideas and perspective into the work. Unfortunately, AI is just not there where it's able to read your thoughts and all your experiences and then be able to predict what you're most likely to think, your new ideas that you're going to have. We're just not there yet. So as of right now, you need to do that step yourself. So ultimately use it as inspiration when it comes to brainstorm, but you need to add some of your own ideas and some of your own experiences into that. From that, you then get the building blocks of the essay. You go in, you smash it all together, and then you add your own ideas to make it flow, make it more personal, whatever the case may be. Ultimately, if you ask ChatGDP to write an essay about a history prompt that you have in class, do not do that. It's not a good output. It does not help you prepare yourself for the graded exam. And it's not that high quality either. Instead, I suggest brainstorming your perspective and your ideas that you can bring from your own personal experience into the essay. You can then ask Chat to write the essay in style of one of your previous works. In this way, it mimics your work rather than the internet's work. And here's a big one. Ask it to change the style, emotion, rhetoric, whatever the case may be, of your work, of your essay, so that it mimics the highest possible mark of a rubric. This is especially useful in IB or AP where you have a rubric of what the highest marks look like. Ask chat to just rewrite it in terms of that highest mark and to give you feedback based on that highest mark. So I saw this one instruction from, quote, all about AI, end quote, and I thought it was actually very clever. I would suggest pasting in the rubric beforehand and then having chat use that rubric as fuel for then making these suggestions. You can find this prompt and all the other prompts in the description down below. It's the creativity behind those instructions and prompts that have the largest possible impact. Rather than writing the essay, you focus on creating innovative ideas from your brainstormed ideas, perspectives, and thoughts, such as everything you should already be doing in the brainstorming phase, and then you just use AI to turn those thoughts into an essay. Creatively writing an essay plan and then putting said essay plan into chat to generate the final essay is the same, in my opinion, from getting a complicated math expression, doing the creativity necessary to simplify it into some simple arithmetic, and then just using your calculator to do that math. Some people might disagree with me on this, but the technical skill of writing can be thought of from the same light of doing pure arithmetic. And I see this as the future of education and will actually make students much smarter because we tell them to focus on the creativity, on the brainstorming, on the idea making and whatnot, instead of focusing on the technical execution. Complicated grammar will become to a lesser degree, similar to that of doing complicated arithmetic, such as multiplying 750 by 232.5. The more you use this tool, the more you start to realize that the questions and the type of questions you ask the AI are actually the most important tools and skills necessary to master this technology. Elon Musk always said that the question you ask is the most important. When I used to build rockets in high school, I remember stumbling across this video. The really the hard part is the question. The, question. the answer is the easy part. You need a much more powerful computer to tell you what the question is. Right. And this is true. At the point at which you can properly frame the question, the answer is comparatively easy. Now we're slowly starting to see why this is true. And I believe that education will slowly start to move towards this model of asking the right question. This is actually known as prompt engineering, and it's the process of carefully choosing certain prompts that the AI will use to develop answers. I would suggest spending some time and really going through this course right here 
here that I've linked up in the description below. It will save you tons of time and give you that edge for frankly the rest of your life because this technology is not going away at all anytime soon. For example, adding an example in the prompt actually allows the AI to develop more realistic answers. I believe that the future of education comes down to asking good, accurate, and thoughtful questions so that the AI can then come up with thoughtful solutions. Because if everyone has access to the same technology, the people who are going to win are the people who are able to ask the best questions. Just because there exists a more powerful AI now that can do all these different things, that doesn't mean that you need to stop studying. AI can't and should not replace your study times. It cannot replace your actual effort, discipline, and work habits that you put into the material and the content yourself. We know that active recall is the most, if not the most effective strategy that exists when it comes to learning information. This is when you actively recall information when studying helping you answer questions similarly to that of a class test environment. I've always been saying to use a question bank to help you study. Whether that's IB or AP, you need to use some sort of question bank that mimic the type of questions that you're gonna see on exam to help you study. Now we can actually use chat to generate questions that are similar to your teacher's questions that she might ask in the exam. Here are some tips to actually make this process more efficient. You first start by making the chat think that it's a very specific teacher. Your task is to create a grade 10 math question on the topic of quadratics. Do not reveal the answer until I say so. And when you're wondering about certain questions, you can actually paste in the question and then follow it up with this command right here. Let's think about this step-by-step step, considering all possible options. Or you can say the following, explain everything you did to get that answer. And if you have any questions or concepts, pluck it in here, have it explain it to you simply in the form of a teacher or in the form of any celebrity you can think of. And if you still don't understand, ask it to explain it to you at a five-year-old level. I found that that simplifies the concept so much that I'm able to discover the underlying intuition behind set concepts. Now, apart from the benefits of actually writing things down as shown by this Harvard study, I basically never take time to review my notes that I've written. And it's even less now that I can just ask ChatGDP to summarize those notes into very simple bullet points and then I will do the active recall myself to learn it and then make sure I'm prepared for the test. So instead of taking notes to review as all the biology girls used to do in my old school, take notes for that mind to body connection and also ask questions of those notes that you can then pluck into chat. I believe that note taking will evolve to a point where you're taking notes of the questions that arise in your head. For example, your notes might be, I don't understand this concept about inflation, or this doesn't really make much sense to me, or questions that you can then follow up and ask ChatGDP, or questions that actually test your understanding. I see this as being one of the most effective forms of note taking because it forces you to actively recall reshuffle and think of the information that's being presented to you in a completely different way. And it also avoids what most people fall into when taking notes, which is just writing down words, right? Most people take notes, they don't really know what they're writing, but they're, they're just writing down words. Now, write down questions, you actually need to think about the questions you ask, and then you can follow up the notes behind that by plugging that question into chat. This is also why it's essential to review content consistently. Now, here's something that I have to deal with a lot, and it's virtue. For whatever reason, people think that by ignoring ChatGDP, by not using it, they're being somewhat of a virtuous person and they're doing good to the world. If you think this, you're absolutely wrong. And the reason why is because someone is going to use this content and they're gonna beat you at your own game. What virtue is there in an actually ambitious and actually smart person going into a bad university while someone else who's more dumb but is able to use ChatGDP gets into a better university? There's absolutely no virtue in that whatsoever. As long as you're using AI ethically and you're not using it to cheat and you're using it to actually enhance your learning and better use that active recall and make it more productive and whatnot, definitely use it. Not only will it give you that edge competing against other students, but it will also help you learn more. All right, so this is the best part of the video. As you know, time is limited and I love my productivity strategies because they help us leverage and use our most valuable and limited asset, which is our time and our attention. So try this strategy if you wanna absolutely dominate. I want you to spend one day tracking absolutely everything you do during your day. This can be done by setting an alarm that goes off every 30 minutes. Then at the 30 minute mark or between rests or whenever you have a, then at that 30 minute mark, you can go back and reflect on how well you use your time. Then spend one time reflecting and asking yourself how I can make that time more productive. Then based on that information, go back, make small little tweaks every single day, have those tweaks add up over months, years, 
maybe even decades. And by the end of that, you're going to have saved hundreds and hundreds or maybe even thousands of hours that otherwise would have been spent doing useless things, inefficient things and whatnot. Ask yourself, where can ChatGDP and other AI tools help bridge that gap and remove those small inefficiencies? All right, that's the end of this video. I hope you got a lot out of it. Take these strategies, apply them into your own life and start reaping those rewards. If you have any questions at all, leave them in the comment section down below, like the video and all the other good stuff. And until next time, stay productive. We'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.